Hey, it's Grayson with Ableton for Church. I wanted to show you how to prep a multi-track when you're using the adaptable Ableton method, the session view method for running tracks for church. Um, but let's get started. So first you're going to get the actual multi-track. So that might be from multitracks.com, loop community, or some you made your own or a different service. So I'm going to download that right now. And I just go over to multi-tracks and then normally you'll have to buy it here, but I've already purchased this, so I'm gonna hit download. And then wherever you get your tracks, it's best to use the original key, which we can talk more about later. And then once that download is done, we are gonna create, this is gonna be step one. The official step one is create a folder, whoops, create a folder and call it multi-tracks. This is going to be, can't do both at the same time. This is gonna be where all of your Multi-tracks live, you're gonna keep them all in one folder. Um, so our file that's downloaded, I'm gonna unzip that and I'm gonna put that, uh, it's gonna be a folder with an Ableton set and the stems or the multi-tracks in it. And I'm gonna take that and drag it into this multi-tracks folder. Cool, so now we have our like raw multi-tracks to work off of. I'm gonna open this and it's gonna open up Ableton. It opens up an arrangement view, which is like any other DAW, right? It's left to right. We have our tracks laid out vertically like this, sorry, horizontally. And then if you tab over, Ableton also has session view. And that's where really the adaptable Ableton method, the session view method that I use is. Um, so we're gonna bring these things, these tracks over to session view, and they're each gonna have their own, this is called a scene, these rows, they're each gonna have their own scene per uh, part of the song. And they're gonna just follow each other. They're gonna play one after another. When this, when the intro scene ends, it's gonna play the verse scene. All right, so our second step, first step was we created a multi-tracks folder. Second step is gonna be moving the guide to the top. So I don't ever use the click track, so I just delete that. I use the Ableton's onboard click for everything. So I just delete their click, boom, we have the guide on top. Now is where really the, the meat and potatoes comes in. We're gonna copy to the session view in separate scenes. So to get started with that, just hover over the dividing, hover over the edge of the um, guide track header there and drag down so we can make it a bit bigger. And we're gonna make a cut here. So if you click on where the next section starts, so click on where intro starts and hit Command E, that's gonna make a cut. And we're gonna delete that, the whole rest of the track. So I'll explain why in a little bit here. So now we're going to hit Command A. It highlights everything. Click, hit Tab. It'll bring bring you over to Session View. And now we're just going to drag this into place. All right. We just did our first scene. We made our first scene. I'm going to delete this A and B return. You only need to do this once per song, but we we don't use that. So um, this is our first scene. One. Two, one, two, three, four. All right, it's the count off scene. So let's drag this master to be a little bit bigger uh, and we'll keep going. So I'm gonna tab back here. If you play audio from one view, it's gonna gray things out in the other view. Um, so let's just hit this little red button here and it'll bring us back to our arrangement view. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna work on getting the intro scene in. So there are a few intro scenes. I'm just gonna go exactly how the markers the arrangement markers are. So I'm gonna drag from the beginning of the intro to the end of that intro. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I but this is uh, in a, just a little bit different way. I'm gonna click and drag, and then, so I'm highlighting everything in the count off because we already got that, right? And I'm gonna hit delete. And so, do you see we're basically setting a new endpoint for these clips? Um, we'll just keep going, it'll make sense in a second. So I'm gonna hit Command A again gonna click, hit tab, and drag it in. So now we have the same audio files, but they are just starting at a different point. You can even see how the, down here, how this in point is moving. So this is the intro scene. Click here, it's gonna give the count in. One, two, one, two, three, four. It goes right in. It doesn't do that automatically yet. We're gonna get to that later. 
So I'm going to keep going like this. I'm going to drag. And then I'm going to chop off everything we just used. And notice how I'm only resizing the guide track. That is because this automatic, you know, moving from count off to intro to verse, it's all based on the in and out points, the length of the guide track. Um, and the reason I leave these going is just in case something super weird happens. One, two, the whole rest one, of the song two, will play. three, four. Because these have the entire song there. So it's just sort of a fail safe. And it actually just saves you work. And we're just going to keep going all the way through the song like this. Uh, when you're not stopping to explain it to people, you can do this in like two to four minutes per song, I'd say. So sometimes what you will run into is it just gets a little bit wonky with um, if you filled up all of your scenes that are available. You can still add on, but you kind of have to click and drag and oh. There it is. If you don't want to have to deal with that, just come over here to the scenes and hit Command I and just add a bunch of scenes. Going to finish up the rest of the song. So now we have the entire song split out. I just press Command Option L to hide that detail view if you're interested. We have the whole song split out into scenes. So the next step, the fourth step, is to name the scenes. So I'm going to start with the count off scene. We'll just call it won't stop now. I like to give the key of the song and then a dash. And then this is really important that we get um, the BPM. So 122 followed by the letters BPM. And then it, there can be a space between the number and BPM. And then either, well, the time signature is next. So in this case, it's going to be 4-4. Four, four. And I'm just going to play one, to test two, that. One, two. So a couple things. When the, um, for like the click subdivisions, if it's going to be greater than 90 BPM, faster than 90, then I will typically leave it at 4.4. Four. But if it's your typical worship music that's like 70, 68 BPM, if it's lower than 90 BPMs, I would do 8.8, eight, which is going to double it. Uh, subdivisions will sound like this. One, two. Which is just way too fast for that tempo. Um, but just a note there. And then the reason this is important is because see how when I entered this data here, the the play button turned blue? That's because there's now information in this that will affect the global tempo. Uh, where is that? The global tempo and then the global time signature. So if I change this to 90 BPM and uh, 7, 8. See how it changed it to 7, 8 and 90 BPM. So this is, this will come in handy during rehearsal, jumping from song to song. It's going to automatically force Ableton to jump to the right time signature and the right tempo. So we want that on every single uh, one of these scenes. So we're going to go through, first let me copy. I'm going to copy all of that stuff and then We'll just start going through and naming our scenes. If you forget the order, which you totally will, I do. Um, I think there's three intros. You can just tab over and look at the markers. One, two, three, as long as you followed them. Verse one. One note is that to rename, you hit Command R, right? And then once you type in, let me figure out what section is there. Another chorus. Once you type in the section and paste the information you can hit the down arrow and it'll jump you right to the next one then you can restart and just hit command r so on this is right about up there with chord charts and like making chord charts uh, in terms of like things that will reveal how formulaic worship music is okay just getting to the end here perfect so now we have the whole song mapped out all in separate scenes that was step four, name the scenes. Um, yeah, and then now we're going to move on to step five. We're going to color. So this is basically done, but uh, I really like color coding. And you know what? I assume you do too. So pick a color. Man, I used to spend so much time on just like, is this more of an orange song? Is this more of a... There's so many colors in Ableton. Um, 
but uh, a pro tip for this is if you select the titles of the tracks, color them. So to color anything, you select it and right click, right? And then if you want to do that for the titles, then you can hit assign uh, track color to clips, and now it's all orange. And this is something important to me anyway, is I always title the count off scene, or I always color it black. And you'll see why later, but when you're assembling a set, it's really helpful to know where the start of each song is. All right, and then one of the last things I like to do is to just kind of pre-filter out the tracks that I know I'm not gonna use most Sundays, right? So this is just about multiplying your time. Why go through and remove the bass track if you have a bass player 99% of the time? Why do that every single time you're building a set, assembling a weekend set, when you could just do it right now, right? Just do it once. And I'm just shift clicking to highlight them and hitting zero to disable or enable. Almost always have drums, bass, acoustic, um, guitars, everybody has their own philosophy, right? But a lot of times I don't put any guitars in the tracks. Um, usually we have a keyboard player. They may or may not cover some of these things and we never do background vocals. So um, depending on the needs of your team, right? You may have a lot of these things in, um, but whatever works for you, get it in a kind of, you know, 80, 90% of the weekends you want to uh, have it so that this can just be pulled in and will work for you. All right, everything's colored. We're muted our unneeded tracks, and now we're going to delete the clips that are in arrangement view. We just don't want to drag this stuff in when we're assembling the weekend sets. So I just hit tab to go over there and deleted that. Don't worry if you want to get back to, um, you know, the tracks, how they were, you can just take that first, that first scene, tab and drag it over. And then you've got everything and then you just would extend that out. And we're back to where we were at. So you're not deleting them, you're just deleting the references to them, really. And that's it, we're ready to save. So just hit Command S to save. Sometimes it'll come up with this, they may have made the set in to 9 or something. You can just hit Save As. We'll just leave it called Multitrack, overwrite that old one. Man, I know this is a lot at first, but trust me, this will become muscle memory in no time for you. To help you out, in the meantime, we have a gift that I'd love to give to you called the Adaptable Ableton Method Cheat Sheet. This is just a cheat sheet PDF download that I'd love to send to you that just walks through um, so you can just keep things sorted and just be up and running this awesome tracks method in no time. So follow the link in the description for that. And we'll see you for the next video, which is going to be assembling a weekend worship set. Thanks so much. God bless. Bye.